Hello and good morning. Welcome to our service of the Word Morning Prayer on this seventh Sunday after Trinity, the 26th of July 2020. I hope you enjoy our service this morning. Um, we're coming to the end of July and from the beginning of August, all three of the churches will be open for gathered worship um, and this service will continue online for August. So please do give us feedback as to how we're doing and what you would like us to provide. Um, the service sheets will be available in printed form as well if you let us know that you'd like one. The services next week will be 9.30 at St Tadens, 10.30 at St Mary's and 11 o'clock at St Nathaniel's. A moment of quiet. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek forgiveness for our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We've done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sins. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the play, praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading from the New Testament this morning is from Romans chapter 8, verses 28, 26 to 38. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those who, whom he has predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who inter indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of God? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long, we are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And our Gospel is taken from Matthew. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Chapter 13, verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 52. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. 
It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone's found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of his heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Lord. When you think of heaven, what picture comes to mind? Isaiah talks of the throne room of God with seraphs flying around. The revelation of John pictures a gleaming city. Jesus talks of a mansion with many rooms and also of paradise, which is usually interpreted as a garden, a sort of uh, garden of Eden recreated but better. Maybe you think of angels sitting on clouds plucking harps or St Peter stern-faced standing at the pearly gates with a ledger in his hand. All of those are very place-centred ideas. Heaven is somehow up there above the clouds in a way that doesn't really fit with our knowledge of the cosmos and the universe now. This section of Matthew's Gospel gives us an entirely different way of thinking about the dwelling place of God or the kingdom of heaven. One that isn't centred on place, but on relationships and value. The funeral service quotes 1 Timothy drawing on the book of Job. We brought nothing into this world and it's certain we carry nothing out. Yet, as Paul writes to the Romans in the passage this week, nothing Nothing in creation, even death, when we leave all of creation behind, can't separate us from the love of God. What we do take into the next life, into the kingdom of God, is love. Love that is expansive, like an enormous tree, or permeates through us like yeast through flour. Love that is as valuable as buried treasure or a fabulous pearl. So, when we are caught up into the kingdom like fish in a net, we are the good fish, the ones worth keeping. We find that as we have treasured him, we are now the master's treasure. Amen. I do hope that you are able to gather with us next week to worship. Even then we won't be able to shake hands um, as we would do normally in the peace. But I warmly offer you a handshake now virtually. Say the peace of the Lord be always with you. Have our collect for today. Let us pray. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as a mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray today in our quiet time of reflective prayer for God's guidance as we seek ways to further his work in our parish and in our Walton team. 
We pray for fresh expressions to further his work. And though we fear the uncertainties of what lie ahead of us in St. Nathaniel's and our Walton team of churches, we pray your love will guide us through to a brighter, secure future when all our churches can become beacons of your love in our communities. Guide Fiona and all your clergy to lead us into churches dedicated to spreading your gospel of encouragement and love. May they become beacons of light for future generations to come. We ask in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And a final blessing. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look kindly on you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those you love now and always. Amen.